everybody. This is a uh, live in radio. I'm your host with uh, Stephen Sykes, Mr. LP. I pray everybody is going well today. And uh, we're doing as a request of everybody. I apologize again that the uh, first show audio got a little bit messed up. So we're taking time out to revisit everybody and get the information for you. Um, again, as I was stating before, that uh, getting your high school um, diploma or your GED is very important. Too many people, and especially in a minority community, are not taking great focus in making sure that you have these things uh, for yourself. Stats have proven that you earn more uh, money over the lifetime of your life, actually. And then also, in addition, um, better way of life, the access to more different things, your health and your peace of mind, a variety of different things, not just financial, that having that education helps. And therefore, I wanted to make sure we tap within the community to get that good information for you. I'm here with uh, Ms. Kristen Holt. Hot, excuse me, from uh, J. Sergeant Reynolds, a middle college program, and we have a guest, and I'm going to save that name for later. How are you doing today, Ms. Hot? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, so right now, you're an academic coordinator and instructor for uh, J. Sergeant Reynolds. Um, well, the middle college. Middle program. college. I'm it, sorry. It's part middle of J. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. And you've been with the the school research program for how many years now? Um, well, I'm I'm starting in my third year of, of uh, working with the program, um, but I come from an adult education background. I worked in the, in the city of Richmond um, for about nine years, um, close to ten years prior to coming here in adult education. Are you um, from this area? Uh, you know, I, I lived here in Virginia since uh, I went to college, I, okay. I moved, but I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Okay. And how did you, um, since you've been here, how do you like Richmond and how did, um, you know, what caught you about Richmond? Uh, well, my husband caught me about <laughs> Richmond, so he, he's from here. Okay. So that was a good reason to come to Richmond, but um, I quickly found um, uh, uh, my niche um, in, in some social justice um, uh, projects, um, and uh, that led me into adult education, um, working at uh, a local family development agency, a nonprofit in Gilpin Court. Um, I had the opportunity to take over uh, a GED preparatory, preparatory class. Um, that was my first exposure to that, that this kind of context, and um, I just fell in love with it. So um, that was about 2001, I guess, 2000, 2001, 2002, okay. um, and I've never left. Now that you were part of this program, um, how did the middle college program start um, from here at J. Sergeant Reynolds? Uh, well, actually, uh, this is our 10-year um, anniversary. Uh, okay. we, we, we started in 2003. Yeah, thank you. Um, and we've been, um, we've, our model has changed a, a little bit, but you know, we really uh, have been in basically doing the same um, transition to college work um, for students 18 to 24 who uh, did not complete their high school uh, education in their secondary um, in their school. Um, and they may have left school in you know 10th, 11th, 12th grade, um, but they're when they come to us, they're between the ages of 18 and 24. Um, and what they receive from us um, is the educational training, um, uh, the college preparatory um, academics, and career development. Um, and we've we've been able to add and, and take away a few things over the years, but that's essentially the same model we've been we've been uh, doing for the last 10. Okay, and now let's say there's a lot of women, and well, both men and women, but there's a lot of women who did not finish, and some may have uh, that for social or emotional issues. What other services besides the GED uh, aspect to help them retain, uh, I would say, continue on with the program and, and to offer that retention? Uh, well, we do uh, actually have a, a, a retention and transition specialist, and, and uh, her name is Carol Krantz, and her role is really to, to identify some of those barriers to success um, that students might have and really work with them about how to uh, manage some of their issues, um, contact the resources that they need, um, you know, whether that's uh, backup childcare. Um, we don't provide any of those services. What we do is we try to help students develop the advocacy skills and, and resources um, to, to link to resources that they might need. But really first, to communicate with people who are um, working with them about what some of those issues are. Um, our career coach, uh, Torsky Dotson Arnold, she works with our students in identifying barriers to employment, and, and, and that may come from their own history, but it may come from some of their own um, you know, lack of, of understanding about how to present themselves. So you know, we really are trying not only to focus on the academics, 
um, but we are not um, a social service agency in the gotcha. way we, where we provide those services directly. What are some of the reasons you finding people um, becoming in need of uh, going through this program? Or like, what are some of the backgrounds of the various students? Um, well, you know, the, the reasons that students leave school, uh, we found, I mean, it, 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 there are myriad reasons. Um, there's no one reason that students uh, separate from school. Um, and, and I would say that our students are no different. They, they're, they're just a variety. Um, you know, students may have had parents with illness and they uh, chose to stay at home to help their family members or to take care of, um, you know, the children in the home because parents are working. Um, some students identify, um, you know, bullying as, as some of the reasons they just really um, were not able to stay in the school environment, um, safety issues. Um, you know, what I've found in our recent research of looking at our students um, and their reasons for leaving school was that academics was, you know, part of it, but it wasn't the whole, certainly wasn't the whole picture. And, and many of our students, um, because we require a minimum level of academic uh, um, ability to, to apply, really to, to proceed in the program, you know, academics was not something that they identified as the, the, as the sole reason. Um, they may have been behind in credits, but that's largely because they weren't able to be in school, or they, you know, they weren't in school enough to complete the courses. So. Um, it's just you, know, you can talk to any student and find that it's a combination of things. What are is this a publicly funded or a privately funded program? Or uh, we are uh, mostly grant funded. Okay. Um, we manage anywhere between five to eight grants at any one time, um, and that has its benefits and it has its uh, challenges as well. Um, in that sense, we're not tied to national. Um, uh, accountability standards that may be a hindrance to some of the things that we do um, but, but yes we do have to apply for funding and, and we work on grants all the time what are some of if someone wanted to say okay you know what I wanted to offer grant is there a I guess yearly or quarterly uh, program to help earn those funds for grant if someone wanted to contact an offer how would they go about it we are taking any and all offers for funding <laughs> uh, at any time, 25 to 25,000. Uh, you know, our, the program um, we've estimated um, costs um, anywhere between 2,500 and, and 3,000 dollars per student. Um, okay. So while that is uh, might seem high, um, you know, the students, uh, you know, the, the figures are for per student anywhere from 10,000 to uh, 12,000 a year per per I student for one high school year. So. Good price. So we are far below um, the cost um, that the, you know they, they were um, uh, that were afforded for them at do the high get, school level. But do we get breakfast and lunch? <laughs> uh, we you know we we encourage the students to come <laughs> fed and ready to learn. Um, this is an adult program. Okay. Um, uh, no, we do not. Provide. We do provide. We do, we are we have a generous grant that allows us to provide bus tickets for our students, okay, um, which is a, a, that's extremely a good thing. important. That's a very good thing because I know a lot of people always say they have trouble or don't have a ride. Uh, baby mama, baby dad, all these other different mm -hmm. issues. I can't get off work, so that's a great thing. Uh, tell us, um, how many students are um, throughout your program? Like, is it a year-long program, or how long does it uh, take for someone to say, okay, uh, I guess it depends on how long they were or how much school they finished, but the average, what is it? Is it, let's like, say, a year or nine, um, 18 months? Our program, uh, we have three semesters or sessions per year. We run with the college, and of course, because we're on the college campus, um, and we're a college transition program, we really are trying to model our semesters as much as we can around the college semester. So um, we have students fill out an application. Um, they um, come through our testing um, and our assessment um, process. And then if they are at that minimum academic level, which is a 9.0 on, on the TAVE, um, the D-level TAVE or better, um, they come to an interview. Um, we are really trying to educate students about whether or not this is the right match for them. This program is rigorous. It, there's a lot of accountability. It's, it's a full semester. Um, it's not, uh, you know, you sort of tutor and then you go to test. You're really enrolling in a semester. And so we need for students to, to think about whether it's the right kind of program for them. It, is, it sounds more like, it, it, although it's a middle college, but it's gearing you towards the future if you decide to go forward with college. Absolutely. I mean, you, you wouldn't, you, you cannot come sort of in the middle of the semester and say, oh, I'm ready to, you know, start college unless you're, you know, really you're signing up for an eight-week class. But so we, we have students doing that beforehand. Um, they get their acceptance letter. They're really preparing. And then classes start on a certain date, and they end on a certain date. So, um, like, if I attend 
regardless of where I'm at, if I attend all three semesters, I'm graduated. You, you only, t uh, we enroll you for one semester. Okay. Um, so this is a new cohort of students for the summer, for the fall, for the spring. Okay. Um, in the summer, uh, we only have the day class. Um, but in the fall and spring, we have two um, concurrent classes going on. So day and a morning class and an evening class. How many students do you say are these large classes? Are you doing the semester? Are you running four to one class? How many students per class? Uh, well, you know, we serve. Um, we we say that we you know we can serve a hundred students per year. Um, um, so we we sort of try to look at it as twenty per class. So if that's twenty in the summer and then forty in both the fall and the spring. Um, um, you know, we en our enrollment varies. Um, it depends on students. You know, we we take all applications, any applications, students eighteen to twenty four. Is it application fee? Uh, not not <laughs> at all. Um, in fact, that's great that you bring it up. You know, we when we talk about the fees associated, that is none of that is passed on to the students. It is a hundred percent scholarship. Um, so like, students. I I could come and sign in, and I don't have to pay anything. I just need to show up and do the work. Uh, well, you, you have to be accepted <laughs> to the program. Um, you know, we, we have an application process because we're looking to accept students who are, uh, you know, not only at the academic level, but at, the, at, at other readiness levels to, for, for this program. Um, there are times when we might defer a student and, and, and really look for some readiness indicators that you know, they might develop um, over you know, a few months. Um, so, for example, if someone came in to apply for the summer program and they had the academic scores, but they came to interview and they really just seemed like they had a lot going on in their life that would make enrollment in the summer semester kind of a, a, a challenge, okay. we're really not going to move that forward. We're going to look at you know deferring them to the fall and saying, you know, here's what it seems like you need to maybe get in place so that you can really be successful. What about those with language issues like... Uh, speaking of our language or let's say someone come in who may be an immigrant or who just came through the recent um, child program as child acceptance program uh, whatever the case may be and they're let's say they borderline 22 23 24 then obviously they don't want to go to the high school how does mm -hmm. that language barrier help or does, does the program have some leeway for that uh, all students um, go through the same process regardless of um, you know their their background um, or their you know their first language um, you know if you are able to, to achieve that 9.0 on the D level PAVE um, you know you're considered for an interview so there really isn't something where we have a um, we're, we're not looking for a particular type of, of student in, in that way um, is the classes that you say they're you sign them up per semester. Is it uh, during the day? Is are the classes at night, the middle, the eat, um, midday? How long are the classes? Well, this summer um, we are we're, our, our summer program starts June eighteenth. Um, we're running a shorter, modified version of our program um, uh, for this summer, um, and that is just a morning class. So it's nine to one. Um, they will be taking two classes: um, a math class, a math college prep class. Um, and also an English uh, reading and writing intensive class. So um, they'll also be doing career workshops and transition workshops. So there's a full four days a week. Students always come. It's a four day, four day a week program. Monday, Monday through Thursday. Monday through Thursday. Okay. Um, so it's either, you know, normally it's 10 to 1 and then a 5 to 8. But this, in the summers, we change things. It's a little hot, it's a little cooler to start <laughs> earlier. It's better. Okay. What are some of the things like uh, that you do? Uh, besides the classes, like, you know, you, do y'all take field trips? Do y'all have uh, guest speakers? Do you have uh, other things? What are some of the other activities? Uh, you know, we do try to have a, a, a very a comprehensive experience for students. Um, you know, they're, they're, we have a collaborative team um, that works with every uh, a class. Um, so our career coach has, for example, um, you know, they're working on a curriculum where uh, there's a culminating activity where their business leaders from the community come in for mock interview panel and, and they're exposed to people from the fields really that they've identified that they're interested in, um, which is really wonderful to have them, you know, firsthand talking to people about what, you know, what are employers looking for. Um, we go out on a volunteer give back to the community day because, of course, they're very aware that they have been scholarships in the program, so we do try to connect the students back to some uh, community organization that they so can, they can get their money's worth. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we've gone to the food bank several times. We've volunteered at a community garden. Uh, just this past uh, April, we went to Habitat for Humanity Restore. I mean, we really are just volunteering in the community. I would have loved to have done that. that. I could. I, yeah. I, I, do, I graduated high school, but I would have loved to have done some of those things. We did a lot, but that sounds like a lot of good things. Uh, even our graduates come back. You know, uh, we invite our, our graduates to come back every semester to speak to incoming students. Um, either at interview or in the 
classroom once classes have started, and, and it, it, it's the best. Um, it's the best guest speaker in the sense that they can identify mostly with that student who really, you know, they they, they share a lot in common. Uh, not necessarily, but they, you know, they this person can can speak to them as someone who succeeded in the program and has some tips and advice, and, and they can ask questions of that person. So we really enjoy having our graduates come back. What do you? Uh, I know this may be outside your range, but let's say somebody's like, you know what, Mom, I'm 55 years old, I want to go back to school, or someone's 32, whatever the case may be. Obviously, you said this is 18 to 24. What other direction to those people who are in those age groups, you know, what are some avenues for them that you suggest? Well, we do get uh, quite a few calls and, and actually referrals even from the college, you know, people who come to apply to J. Sergeant Reynolds um, at, the, at the college directly and they don't have their, their GED credential and so they may send them up to us just to um, get some information. So we do refer students um, of all ages who come to us um, to the community programs. Um, we have a, a, a sort of a handout that gives information even for Goochland, Chesterfield, mm. Henrico. Okay. Um, and, and all students who come through the application process, if they're not quite eligible yet for our program, we talk to them about where they can enroll in classes to really um, boost their scores so that they can um, come back to us. And Okay, and then so you have classroom. What facilities, I can see what we have, but uh, for the listeners, mm -hmm. what facilities do we have? Are we all working with old, you know, Windows 95 machines or something? Do we got, are, are, do, are our books and things, are they adequate to what they have? Or, or are we just dealing with old donated equipment? You know, what are the quality of our facilities here? Well, you know, we were fortunate in our founding years, um, you know, GED tests run on a cycle of really 10 year um, periods. And so, um, you know, we're just closing out the 2002 cycle of the GED. And so materials that are created for that generally, you know, they exist for that 10 year period. Gotcha. Um, and again, we were, when we first started out, we were lucky enough to be able to purchase, you know, a, a ton of, <laughs> of resources. And we, we continue to add to them. And we have our own computer lab with 10 computers. Um, and of course, that's IT supported from the college. Um, so we're on Windows 7, you know, moving to Windows 8. I think, um, uh, you know, we have, uh, we're, we're getting some Promethean or, or some sort of smart board this summer, but we have you know, projectors so and things like that. So okay. we're a fully technology integrated program. Um, you know, students, when they are enrolled in our program, have college IDs. They have access to the library and the full scope of services there. Um, the shuttle, they can, um, you know, go out to the other campuses. Um, so, the, so the nature of a transition program like ours is that while GED is one of the credentials that, that we're working on, we really are looking at prepping for that next level of academics, you know, college, English 111, and they're, they're uh, in three Get out the 100 courses and things like that. Or yeah, we want them to, as, as much as possible, seamlessly transition to feel as though they are comfortable if they choose to go to J. Sergeant Reynolds or really any other institution that they would understand that, you know, things work in a semester and that there's a syllabus. So um, I can finish here and I can go to Princeton then in the fall. We, and we will help you do, <laughs> and we will help you do that. Absolutely. We help with uh, FAFSA, the financial aid piece. Um, you know, we, we really are, it, it's embedded throughout the process. We don't just start talking to students at the end of the program about what they want to do. The whole, our whole program is geared towards the next step, and that while you're here, you're taking care of the things that will allow you to take that step. But you, you need to know What's at some on? point what what it is, and if that's continuing with work and not necessarily starting college right after you complete our program, well, that's that's fine because you know they're the the, the ones that are going to walk those steps. Um, that's, that, and that's a, a positive thing that you're keeping active with them throughout, like you said, you're not speaking with them until the end. Uh, you mentioned something that the stuff, um, the requirements of the, the training, some things was changing in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain the library on that for me, please? Well, uh, you know, as I mentioned, that the GED, um, you know, they, they, they want to make sure that it is a reflective of, you know, skills that, you know, graduating seniors might have, and that the tests are normed against um, uh, high school seniors across the country. Um, so that they really can be seen as some kind of equivalent. Um, even though the GED does not stand for G equivalent, it is the General <laughs> Educational <laughs> Development Certificate. Um, and so the new test has had significant changes, um, but but not, I think, um, ones that should that are shocking because you know SOLs have gone computerized, and you know most high stakes testing is done on computer these days. And so that's one of the major changes. They will no longer be offered in paper and pencil. Okay. Um, students will sign up online. Um, they will pay online. Um, 
I, I'm sure they can you know, go in and pay in person in some places, but my understanding is, and we're still learning a lot. But how, how much is that pay? Because uh, I remember you mentioning the minimal fees. How much is that pay? Uh, the fees right now are fifty-eight dollars for the full battery, the, for the full battery of tests, including an, a first-time tester fee. The, the individual tests are ten dollars a piece, um, but the new test will be twenty-four dollars a piece for each subject test. Okay. Um, and so, it, 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 right now, it's looking like it'll be about one hundred and twenty dollars. Um, uh, but again, either, you know, there are other changes that affect that as well. That there are five tests now, but there will only be four battery uh, subject tests. Um, there will still be math, science, social studies, and, um, you know, and in addition. Um, so there, there are significant changes, but I think um, our program will adapt well because we are already dealing with the digital literacy and having students, you know, working on computers. And we're already in a society where everybody's already on that level. As it yeah, you know, we, we're all, all of us across the country are still learning about what the final um, test will look like. Um, but you know, this happens every ten years. Um, the test is always changing, and you know, you adapt to the new test. So I think this going. is just something we have to you know be ready for. And I think there's some exciting changes happening. Okay, I'll move on, and we have a guest here, Miss Helena Holder. Did I say it correctly? Helena. Helena. Okay. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are All right. You? All right. You are a recent graduate of the middle college program. A year ago, I graduated. A year ago. Yes. Okay. So you are now 19. Okay, uh, so uh, congratulations. Um, how do you feel now that you've graduated? I feel good about it. It was a great accomplishment for me. I'm um, 25 now. 25, congratulations. <laughs> so, uh, you don't look it. Neither one of you don't look it. You said to you, it's hot. You don't look it, so I'm talking about okay. I am 25, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm to it, yeah. Mm, no. now, now that you feel this bundle of joy, tell me, if, uh, if you don't mind, um, how did it feel walking across the stage? Uh, I don't know if y'all had balloons, cake, ice cream, party. How did it feel when you graduated? Okay, I can ex I can share with you how I felt when I got my GED certificate in the mail because I did not actually walk across the stage. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. When I got my GED certificate in the mail, I was ecstatic. You know, it was like the best thing. Well, I felt like I felt like I had hit a milestone, but I wanted to accomplish more. So. You know, it was great though. It was great. Did though. you hug and kiss the mailman? No. <laughs> no. It was just like, thanks, have a nice day. You know, came in an official uh, manila envelope. And Where's it hanging? I got it in a frame that they sent, the middle college sent me a frame for completing the um, digital literacy program and something else, I think. Uh, I don't know, it was, it's just in the frame. Get a CPR training. Oh, so y'all have CPR training. Oh, yeah, it's different things, oh, different oh, every semester. Oh, different. oh, okay, cool. Congratulations. Oh, so y'all got, so besides this, y'all CPR, what else? <laughs> uh, well, we, you know, we do try to ha have students leave with credentials. Um, you know, that's so important. They need to be able to stand out when they go for a job interview. Um, well, y'all coming out more than what some of the high school kids come out with, so that's <laughs> better. I'm grateful for that. Uh, so if I, you know, you can help me out if I fall over. Okay. No problem. Okay, that's good. I'll call somebody for you. Oh, <laughs> so let's see how we do. See how we do. Okay, now uh, tell me, Miss Helena, um, how you were from the Richmond area, born and raised in this. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I've been living in Richmond for like the last 15 years, so 15 you know, I've years. adapted to the Richmond culture. I like it here. It's okay. Okay, where did you come from, man? I'm originally from New York. New York, okay, so I'm uh, from the area as well. So, how do you feel the education system there, here, what have you? Well, at first coming here from New York, I was um the grade that I came in here for was like fourth grade, but I had done that work there, so you know it's kind of we're slower here than it is in New York. I learned more there than I did here, so I kind of ended up skipping a grade. Okay, it's kind of funny how I ended in the pro in this program because I'm supposed to graduate, you know, but life happens. So. Uh, obviously, now tell me, um, what brought you to this program, if you don't mind? Um, I had applied once before and I wasn't able to go through with it. I was working and I come I came to this program because I knew that I wanted to go to college. That was I want to graduate, you know, I'm on my business and I'm still figuring it out myself, but I knew that I needed my GED to move forward and progress in life. So I came back to the program and they accepted me for the second time. I guess, you know, they took me seriously because usually if you come and you know you sign up and you they look at you and they see that you're not really serious about it, you know, not they may not give you another chance. Okay. That's what I, my understanding is. Okay. And now that you got into this program and everything, do you mind what age did you leave high school? 
I can't remember what age I was exactly, but I was in the 10th grade. Okay, not a problem. And um, after you left, you took care of business and took care of things that you needed to do and things like that. I always wanted to go to school. You know, that was always the goal, but it was just everything else in the way. You know, I'm not going to elaborate. No, no, I don't want to know you to. It was always something that was stopping me from going to school full time. You know, usually work, though. Gotcha. Eventually, I just put that aside and came here. How does your family feel about this now? They're proud. You know, everybody's happy. And then I, my younger brother, you know, he's, I want him to come here too, you know, and walk the same, not the same footsteps, you know, but I want him to follow my lead, you know, move on and get his education and smoke the most thing. Okay. Now, are people willing to give you money now? <laughs> not, not just willing to give you money, never. <laughs> well, yeah. It's uh, my family's, you know, great. My brother was the first to go to college and he graduated college and kind of my older brother following his footsteps, but not particularly the same college that he went to, but he has a bunch of master's degrees and bachelor's, and my sister too, you know, she just graduated. So you have a large family that's working Well, yeah, family. yeah, okay. everybody's trying to be educated and, you know, open businesses and try to do their thing, you know. So what what, uh, what degrees uh, your family are into, and what are you looking to go to? I am looking to, in the end of the education career, own my own business. Okay. That's my overall goal. My brother, he is... Um, Tech, a computer specialist. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure. Which direction that we're going to Exactly. Okay. So, uh, so I'm really broad, but he does a lot. I'm for, into um, that. <laughs> he works for SunTrust, I think, company, and he's like an IT computer programmer. Mm -hmm. And my sister, she just got her master's in uh, philosophy or something like mm -hmm. that. I don't know. I know it's bad. I don't really know exactly what it is, <laughs> but no I wanted to be there with her she, for a minute. She gets some money. Uh, yeah, okay. She's here. She's from New York, too, and she's um, here job hunting and taking their interviews and trying to stations herself here. Well, that's a good thing. And even in this tight market, the more that you have available, yeah. the better to put yourself out. And I can tell you from experience, um, went to school, got degrees, masters, all that stuff is still hard. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to be willing to have, uh, like you like you said, you have a, C, a CPR license, you have other different things. You have to have more than one egg in a basket, as they say, and this helps. Uh, what type of business do you want to own? I would like, I don't want anybody to you know, take my idea. Okay. <laughs> but I would like to own a hotel with a 24-hour service restaurant inside. There's a lot of people that's doing that, and there's a lot of great things like that. So you look hospitality. Uh, there's a couple of programs here, hospital now, see, management. I'm right? not particularly looking to deal with the people myself. You know, I really want to give back to the community and employ people okay. in our community. I'm not, you know, particularly. Well, no, I'm take, I'm thinking about just the program to understand yeah, that they're yeah, running. Yeah. Right now, I'm doing uh, business right now, okay. so I'm trying to get the business aspect of it. And then if I have to do hospitality management, then I'll do it. Okay. Now that you've uh, done uh, this, tell me about your experiences when you were going. Uh, in, you're now enrolled in J. Sergeant Reynolds. Of course. Yes. Okay. And you're going full time? Mm -hmm. Well, not this summer. I'm, um, I'm so close to graduation that I was. Oh, I almost took a break this this semester. You know, summer, everybody would cut loose. But I'm so close to graduating. I'll graduate next year. And you if your uh, degree or a two year? It's a certificate program okay. that I'm in right now, but um, I chose this certificate program because I'll be about 20 credits off from an associate's degree. There you so, go. Uh, that was, it was the plan. Origin originally, I didn't want to start the bachelor, I mean the associate's program on the business because I had to do calculus, but I'm well, ready for it What's wrong with now. calculus? I'm ready for it You now. ready for calculus right <laughs> now? I'll pull up some questions right now. I'm I got ready. my pen. Let's get you going. I'm ready. Can you, can you do a regression formula with it? Okay. The power of two? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's fun. <laughs> hey, I just had to ask and things like that. I haven't had bad for like a whole year now, so I'm ready to get back into it. How do you feel about that? They say women, especially minority black women, are not good at math, but we shop. But like, how do you feel when you came in with your skills with, with math? I felt like I was at a decent level. I didn't feel that I there were things that I, of course I could sharpen my skills on, but I came with the knowledge that you know you're supposed to have in ninth grade. And you know, I, um, I felt like I built when I was in this college. Like I learned, there was a lot of resources available for me to build my math skills. Did you feel that you found yourself? Or did you already knew yourself and this just enhanced it? Or you still finding yourself? I think at the age when I came to the program, I already knew what I wanted. I knew what I needed to do, you know, in order to succeed. And I felt like being here was the best option for me. You know, I, I achieved so many goals. But I know the staff, they are a great help. You know, they, they contributed to my success. 
how was some of the days like when you're out? Like how is a month, but it's like the same like 18 weeks, 16 weeks? So, uh, our semester is fall and spring about 16 weeks, and 16 the summer's weeks. about 12. Okay, so those 16 weeks, uh, did you go to the spring or the fall or the summer? Spring. 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 So when you first started, it was snowing in Virginia, a couple of feet of snow and things like that. And you go get wake up at, you know, seven o'clock, get the bus or drive down here. How was those first few days? It was great. I was happy to be here. And you know, you develop friendships with the people that are in the class. And so it wasn't just like, ah, oh, I don't want to go to class today. It was more like I want to go see my friends. And then you know, it was, it was a great experience. I came for them. See, and, and that's the thing I don't understand. Everybody like we encouraged each other when I was in school mm -hmm. and thing. You know, it was like, no, nah, man, you you got to ever no. We we all chipped in. We're going to ride you a little bit, but you you know, we still chipped in. And I, I don't understand the thing of like so that is this. I, I don't understand that, but you guys are very much of a loving family. Yeah, we were like, you know, of course you develop your own cliques and people were, you know, we might have known each other better than they knew each other over at the other table and whatnot, but we were all pretty much close. And so after the program, I talked to everyone that went to the program and I think that I'm the only person, me and another graduate, who actually came back to go to college. Oh, wow. So from okay. after graduating the GED program, so um, I'm on them. Like, you get here now. You know, <laughs> wasting time. Come on. I, I, I see, and that's the encouragement that we, we need to see. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you from your experience, what are some of the things that you feel that, okay, to help others, to, let's say, another young girl, another young man that's listening to you right now, and says, you know, okay, I want to, what are some uh, traps to be prepared for, or what are some of the things to look out for? Negative people around you, people around you who are not really trying to do anything with themselves well their energy will come to you and it'll make you feel bad you know you just gotta be driven and do you know what's best for yourself if you think that if you know that school is the next step for you then you just gotta do it okay get out of the get out of the situation get out of bed get up and it doesn't it really doesn't take a lot of effort to come here and just find out the information and from here you'll have all the access you need to succeed here you know it's just you have to motivate yourself first and then you'll meet the people who motivate you too. What do you see yourself? I'm gonna ask you the stereotypical question. What do you see yourself in five years from now, ten years from now? Five years from now, I see myself just getting this loan from my bank to open my <laughs> business. And ten years I hope to expand my business. You know, even if I have to start off smaller than the whole hotel and the restaurant, my I'll start the restaurant first and then build my hotel around it. Okay. You know? uh, now you mentioned the restaurant. Can you cook? Yeah. My dad is from Barbados and I learned oh, a lot of his recipes, hey. you know. And so I, I really I don't plan to literally be in the kitchen, you know, oh, whatever there will be my recipes. You don't have to be in the kitchen a little mm -hmm. bit to yeah, start off, you know. A little bit, just maybe. a little bit. I can tell you from experiences mm -hmm. you don't have to start off. Yeah. So yeah, um, now that you're you got the hospitality, what so now what how does how does it um they, yeah, I'm sorry. You got your degree. How did it help you in terms of other avenues of your life? Let's say uh, family, relationships, your children, financially. How did that education background improve you holistically? I believe that each class that I've taken for per semester, you know, each class had its own individual aspect. For example, I had a public speaking class where I'm I've overcome my fear of speaking. You know, the sweating and the hot. You know, just you're not sweating now. Exactly. You know, it's, <laughs> I failed the class, but I, I what? <laughs> Who's that person? Is that the teacher over there? No. <laughs> No, it was some technical, like, three-point well, thing. Hey, what's your name? We're going to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I learned a lot. I learned that, you know, opportunities want to continue to open for you as long as you allow them to. You know, just each with each class, I met a professor who knew a person in the business that I'm trying to get into. And, right, I'm not planning on starting my business immediately. I'm thinking maybe if I can find a decent job after I graduate, I might work for a while and, you know, save a little money. But I always want to go to school. Always. So you're grooming yourself. How did it help you learn mo about money management? Not saying that you didn't know before, but how did you know investing or just learning to save and all these other things? Did it did it change your spending? Like, okay, I ain't gonna buy this dress tonight. I'm still learning. Honestly, I'm still learning right now. I'm, um, money management is a really hard topic for everybody. Okay. And what and what and you work at uh, J. Sergeant Reynolds now? Yes, I do work at the downtown campus in the parking lot. Okay. Quick question. Is this only available at downtown or is it? Yes. Middle College right now is available only at the downtown campus. And, and then the next 
uh, closest program is at uh, Germana Community College. Yeah, oh, also, up there. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. So you, what do you do working here? I work in the parking garage in the booth. So um, with your ticket, your parking ticket, mm -hmm. you're going to give it to me. I stick it in the machine and I push a button and let you out of here. So <laughs> if I decided to need to go somewhere downtown and visit the court and I need to park and you can help me out. It's $12. Oh, I'll <laughs> say. Yeah, I like a true j Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, I ask you that question when it's not recorded. It's <laughs> <laughs> twelve dollars. Okay. You know, if I can just add that, you know, when Helena was with us, it was spring semester two thousand twelve, and and she really was a standout student. Um, you know, one of the reasons she's here today is because she she really is here. She she went to school immediately following her semester at Middle College, um, and she hasn't taken a semester off since then. And and then she. Um, got a job, you know, and it's not actually that easy. I mean, that's a state job that she has. You know, you're filling out a state application. Um, um, you know, you're hired as a state employee. But um, I like to add that knowing, you know, the staff here, they helped me, you know, just knowing the people, Ms. Washko was the director of the program. Okay. She knew the, um, my boss downstairs and she knew she had opening in the position. You know, she might have had 10 other applicants, but she allowed me to apply for her job and I got it. What, are, what would you say to the kids that say, in your situation, regardless of the background, children, um, dudes just got this girl pregnant, he has to go to work, or, uh, you know, one got to stay home for a family, another one had to drop out for cancer, you know, a variety of different things. What is your words to them to say, you know what, stay in school? Not, not to say that this program's not good, but yeah. what is your saying, stay in school? You gotta do. You have to do it for yourself. You want to better yourself, and you want to set an example for that guy who is having a baby. You don't want your baby to come, and you don't have the education. You want to motivate. You want to be a leader, you know. And you have to motivate yourself and motivate the people around you. If you motivate yourself, the people around you just fall in place, you know. How do you? Now let me ask you a question. How does it feel? And I know this may sound weird, but do you get a different feeling when people look at you differently now? You know, like people think, okay, you didn't go to school for whatever, and people don't know all the situations. They just immediately look yeah. down on you yeah. and things like that. But then now, you know, now that you're been, do you feel like people look at you as a stronger person? And I, that you feel like you're recognized for who you are now? And I feel like that my credentials will speak for me, you know, and um, my education, the education that I have achieved, I'm proud of it. You know, no matter how people look at me or what they may think of me, you can't, you can't change what I know. You know, you so keep I'm, fighting, I'm just gonna keep, keep fighting, going. Fighting and proud. My, in the opinions of others doesn't matter to me. You know, I know at the end of the day, I'll be successful. Now, let me ask you this, both of you, and either one could go first. What do you feel the community here at large in Richmond, and uh, and also additional, what the government could do to help? not just your program, but the students in general. You hear about the bullying, you hear about the shooting in schools, you hear about teachers having sex with kids, both men and women. You hear all these different things. What are some things you feel in your opinion? I, you're a secretary of education, Ms. Hot. What will you do to try to help, in your view, what could be done? I'll put you on the spot. Well, you know, it's interesting because we're in a, we're in the middle. You know, we 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 aren't connected with the K through 12 system. We deal with um, students who weren't able to get what they needed or weren't you know that, that stepped away from the K through 12 system. So, um, you know, I, I think I think where our focus is is on helping young people um, find access to college um, and the next step. So I would really look at beefing up and supporting. Um, more dual enrollment, more transition services at the K through 12 level. I think what's happening is that even the students who are graduating with the with the high school diploma are often not um, seeing a very clear pathway to college. They sort of graduate, they're done, and and they're on their own. Now the students who might be going to four year uh, universities and colleges, um, and that's not everyone coming out of high school with a diploma. Exactly. Um, sometimes those pathways, you know, are more clear because um, they might, you know, they're, they're starting earlier, they're taking SATs for the students. Who who are not um, on that pathway, there still needs to be a pathway, and I think community colleges are absolutely part of that. They're, they're an important a asset to the community, um, and more traditional age, you know, 18 through 24 students are coming to community colleges. They understand that that's a great on ramp to a four year. Um, the transfer degrees it's are cheaper. <laughs> well, I mean, for, for that, I mean, and that's nothing to you know. A college is, is out of the range of most, most people's people anyway, um, yeah. price range anymore. So exactly. community colleges really, and then they're focused also on you know more vocational type 
um, degrees. I think you know the four-year college and universities, you're not necessarily going to find as much of that. So people who want to do automotive or electric, um, you know, some other career arts. training and things like that, that yeah. you know, which you may find more immediate avenue. Because you see a yeah. lot of people with high-end advanced. I've seen doctors uh, who are philosophers, uh, teachers, professors, work at McDonald's. Were have struggling because they did not, everything was book intensive, but they did not have any other vocational, other labor skills to go along with that. So now, like I remember in school, yeah, we did all the high end college prep classes, but we had horticulture, agriculture, motor shop, wood shop, all these other different things. And I thought that was a big injustice to take that away from schools, along with the music and gym. And then now you're hurting because kids are getting bigger and fatter in school. Uh, no offense to anybody, but you know, yeah. being unhealthy. And then music, studies show having that music or some type of music history helps with numbers and math and a variety of things. So I think if we can bring that back, that can help a lot as well. well some of them that, you know, I just was uh, finished reading um, a study that was done, it was called The Silent Epidemic. It was done for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You can find that online anywhere. Um, talking to students about why they left high schools. And that's really what we're looking at. When we, we all students um, write and uh, do a writing sample here, and then they respond to the prompt that says, you know, why I did not finish a complete high school, um, and and there's just a treasure trove of of, of history there. Um, and I think what we found in looking at our own students' responses is that they really do mirror the national um, sampling of, of responses. You know, and, and and lack of interest, lack of motivation, peer pressure. Um, were really high, um, and lack of feeling as though what they were doing was meaningful to them. And I think that you know those those aren't the kinds of things that get put in the reports because they you know they don't sound very. Um, uh, they, they're not uh, political uh, enough to make enough money. Uh, you know they don't have that scientific <laughs> empirical. They, you know, but I I think when you talk to students, you're hearing much more of those effective kinds of feelings that they just have lost some sense of uh, direction or motivation or meaning. Um, in, in school, and I, you know, so we're hearing that when they're coming to our program. Um, and what we're trying to do, I think, here is is acknowledge that, and and then make very high relevance. Uh, the relevancy factor here, I think, is something that we strive for, and we're constantly um, looking at. You know, it's a short program, um, you know, and that, that may aid us. And you know, we only have you for four months. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do here is really intensively get you focusing on your future and, um, and helping you achieve some goals. So our program is a wonderful design. You know, it started out as a year-long model, and that was not we found was not the best model for us. Um, and you know, we're constantly looking at what would be most effective to the students that we serve. Okay. What do you feel could be done to make some changes done locally or nationally on a federal level or international? What do you feel could be done to help improve? I think that if we get more advertisement out to what the, the resources that are available for the students who aren't, you know, who did drop out of the system or whatever, I think that, like, I see the J. Sergeant Reynolds uh, commercials, and I, I feel like, you know, that those will, will, those will reach people, you know, in the radio shows, and I think we just got to get the, the news out there that there are resources available for the people who are unable to, who, or who think that there is any hope, like, I came Myself, I came at the program at 24. I was at the cutoff age, or 23. I was going to be 24, and I knew that I had to do something. And I had tried other, like um, they have the adult, the adult learning center. That wasn't the best thing for me at that age. You know, I just felt like it was a mix of a mix of people, and you know, you had the older people, 30s and 40s, and it, it just wasn't for me. It felt like I felt like I wasn't, I was stuck, and I wasn't moving anywhere. I just feel like we need to be able to reach the students, the ones who are lost out there, you know, the ones who don't know about the service available to them. How was the test for you? Easy. I don't remember. I don't remember a lot. <laughs> I remember the math, you know, because the math I kind of struggled with. Everybody, everybody that I knew struggled with the math, but the writing and the reading came easy to me, you know, and I can't say this is going to be the same for everyone, but I did practice, and the practice makes perfect, they say. You know? Okay. Well, thank you all both very much for being here, man. Would you mind telling me your, someone says, okay, you know what, I want to sign up. Website, phone number, email. Absolutely. Um, you know, that I, I'm happy to say that, you know, if you're between the ages of 18 and 24 and, and you are you're looking to complete your, your high school credential and move on, um, we want you to submit an application. Um, you do that in a number of ways. You can just come on down and visit us. We have drop-in. You know, we welcome drop-in. 
Um, the applications are here. You can fill them out. Um, you can also get to them online at Reynolds, www.reynolds.edu forward slash middle college. And there you can download um, the application and the fact sheet. Um, you can mail that in. Um, if you call us, you know, we'll mail it to you. The only drawback there is it just takes a lot longer for that process. So it's, it's fine to come in. We're on the sixth floor of the J. Sergeant Reynolds downtown campus, which is on Jackson Street between 7th and 8th, um, right near the, the VCU Larrick Center and the VCU Parking Deck and Altria. Um, and, you know, calling us is fine too for more information at 523-5345. Um, and again, that's Middle College, reynolds.edu forward slash Middle College. I have a quick thought. Let's say somebody older and they've been to school or they've been to high school, maybe not went to college or whatever, but you know what? They want to take high school, they want to take the middle college program because obviously what they call new math and all this other stuff, they can't take it. Uh, you know, we this program was, was started, um, it, as I said, back in 2003, and uh, at that point, um, it was part of Chancellor Dubois, he's the Chancellor of the Virginia Community College System, and um, Mark Warner, the governor at the time, oh, um, really right. put the program together. And so we, uh, we, we are one of nine middle college programs uh, co connected to community colleges throughout the Commonwealth, and that's, that's the model. Okay. Um, and, and the model isn't going to change, um, so it's not something that we as a program can decide for ourselves. It's the, the model is 18 to 24. Okay, no problem. Well, thank y'all very much for uh, taking the time out, and I uh, hope this, uh, this helps uh, y'all certainly enlighten me, enliven me, and helped everybody else out, uh, our listeners out there, and I thank you very much for taking time out to speak with us. Well, thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Have a blessed day.